Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. On the Thunderbird again, good old Thunderbird. Pretty excited to work on this girl. It never really uh, has gotten boring so far, but it's been early. Uh, finally, going after the power steering box and the proportional valve for the brakes, and now they'll clean out the engine bay. Uh, and the front suspension is gone. I took the, the driver's side off, off camera, because it's the same procedure as the other side. I did have a lot of trouble with that front strut nut though. Uh, just a little heads up, if you're doing this stuff, uh, you'll probably have to heat it, uh, keep a, a means to put the fire out real close at hand because it does flare up on you. Anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about. Also, I'll take you down off the tripod and I'll show you what else I've been doing around uh, trying to decide where to go next with this uh, project, like what part to start on. Uh, I'm thinking the... Uh, the trunk area, take the rear bumper off, the rear trunk lid, but I haven't really decided yet, so anything can happen. Anyway, so I'll take you down off the tripod and uh, show you uh, that I put the top down. Not that it's a big deal, but it's down. There she is, all in her glory. The top is down. I left the trunk lid open. The windows were up. I want to drop those. Um, I'm, I was undecided about what I'm going to do next, the trunk area, but you know what? I think I'm going to go after the interior. So I can get the interior put away. It's not great. It'll need new skins anyway on the seats. But I, there's a lot of flammable stuff in there. It's just a mess. So I think I want to do it. And uh, I'm going to leave the doors on because uh, I'm going to have to work here on this area. And I want, of course, depending on what's underneath this paint, if it's all filler, I may have to do something different. But I need to keep this pattern, like these, uh, this shape, I want to carry it back onto the quarter panel. So I have to build all this stuff. So there's pieces left. There's still the uh, skirt pins there. So I do have stuff to work, go on. Plus I do have a, a set of fender skirts I picked up for $50. Amazing price for a set of white fender skirts. They, they of course, they need to be repainted, of course, but they're not rusted at all. And they're an excellent pattern for that, uh, for that wheel arch. I have one for each side. The reason I want to keep the doors on because the door gap is just about perfect. And I don't want to monkey with that right now until I get the panels built. So you can see how, how good these doors open and close. And it's the same on the other side. There's no difference. So, well that didn't close all the way. So, I don't want to monkey with that adjustment just yet until I get these, uh, this at least this area of the patch panel built. So the doors will be staying on. And that's why I took the top down. Now the funny thing was, uh, when I pulled it in, I had it on jack stands, and I never even dawned on me where, I, where it was sitting, is that I couldn't get the top down because the garage door opener was in the way. I could either take the garage door, or op door opener off but since I built these uh, fabulous jack stands, hey, I just moved the car ahead and flicked the top down, moved the car back again. Very easy. Very happy I built them. For all the time it took, it took me about an hour to build all four. So, it's, well, hour and a half, we'll say. So anyway, yes, I'm going to start on the, on the uh, I believe, the interior. Well, this, this trim on this window isn't good. Anyway. All right, so uh, once I get the, like I say, once I get the uh, power steering box off and the proportional valve, I'll be heading in here, all this glorious stuff. So the first bit will be cleaning it out. I, I don't think I'm gonna video cleaning out all the miscellaneous parts. It's just, yeah, I just, I'll, I'll show when I start disassembling, like taking the seats out and all that stuff, just in case someone doesn't know how to do it. And hey, I don't even know how to do it. I mean, this is new to me too. I had the seat out of the driver's seat out uh, when I first got the car, but I haven't taken anything else. I took the back seats out, but that's easy anyway. But I haven't had the dash off the console. So you're going to be learning if you haven't if you haven't done it. The same as I'm going to be learning. Now, I will be reviewing Nick Nick's videos on on vintage Thunderbird repair on the dash stuff before I start because he had a lot of information there that I know will be very helpful. On disassembly, he had an assembly one, but there's also a disassembly. You can follow those cues, know where all the bolts and stuff are, because you're working blind in some of those things. 
Anyway, so it will, I've decided it's going to be the interior. The door panels are already off. And these sail windows, I'll try to get them out too. They'll, they'll be coming out. And uh, one thing I never ever noticed before, of course I never looked close at it because uh, I wasn't ready to work on the car, but Nick mentioned about these uh, convertible windows opposed to the uh, hardtop windows. The hardtop windows are square across the top, almost just uh, flat and down. So these are, are unique to the convertible, so I can't be breaking those or I'll be looking for a new set somewhere. I do have spare uh, hardtop ones, but I don't have any spare convertible ones. All right, enough chatter. Let's get this uh, steering box off and proportional valve. I mean, it's been like a week now. I've been talking about that foolish thing, those two foolish things. So, and the rag joint will have to come off, but I'll take you in, show you. All right, down in the, I'm down in the uh, left side wheel well and you see all that components are gone uh, still dirty in here it needs to be cleaned up but right now I'm going to take the steering box out steering box undo the rag joint steering box and that proportional valve I want I don't know if you can see that or not but the brake line goes down to the to the side of the car here along the rocker I've undid it there's a union there a junction there a fitting that uh, joins a joiner that's what I'm looking for so let's do the proportional valve get that out of the way and that is a uh, half inch uh, hopefully you can see that I think you can so it, it's like again not much of the stuff is on hard so, so we'll just grab there's only one uh, one bolt in that proportional valve now I didn't tackle the you'll see it moving because I just left the uh, the lines on it because I wanted to get the lines up on the bench and get them out again this line here is in really good shape as long as the as long as the uh, the flare nut in good shape I'll reuse it but I mean it's not rusted at all uh, anyway if worst case scenario I have the bends that's what I'm trying to save and that's what I'm trying to say here I'm, tr I'm trying to preserve the bends like I did to the other brake lines all right let me pull this out of here so there's the proportional valve right there easy I don't know how good this is and uh, it may end up changing it out I'm still on the fence about the uh, the braking system on this it's old school so I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna set this aside and I'll get back here on this. All right, so let's do the rag joint. Now I'm not gonna, you're not gonna see me do the rag joint, but you'll see me. So what the rag joint is, I think it's a, it's a 7 16th, uh, 12 point. Um, I couldn't find a, my a 12 point and 7 16th. I don't know why I don't have one, I'm sure I did. But anyway, what 11 millimeter, will work the same. Again, nothing's on too tight. I'll probably just have to do both sides of the rag joint. There's no bolts, there's no nuts on this rag joint to split it, so it's a one, it's all one unit. There, there's the other one. They're fine thread, and like I said, they're 7 16 12 point. If anybody's doing this, out on the bench, They're not on the bench, but anyway, I'll get that socket out after. I'll see if that rag joint will move. There's my little pry bar right here. There's no point in taking the bolts out of the power steering. Oh yeah, that's loose on there. Good, 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 good. All right, so let's go after the the bolts for the power steering box. And I believe they're five eighths. No, nope, 11 sixteenths. So they're 11 sixteenths bolts. Uh, see how they go. Oh yeah, that was easy. All right, let's start them all. Get them all started before we get crazy here. So which one's gonna be the one that's gonna give me grief? <laughs> None. Ooh, that's interesting. Put the jack into that and catch that thing. 
I'll see how it looks. Probably well, thing weighs about 50 pounds anyway. Like, they're pretty heavy, I think. There we go. And she's loose. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to throw a rope over it. I'll grab a rope. I'm sure I have one here close at hand. Not. All right, just hold on. I'm going to grab a rope and I'll lower it down. Back with the rope. Nice having some of these ropes around with the braided eyes already in them. I did this years ago and I've been using these ropes for, I think, 20 years or so. All right, find a place to get it around. You know, I'll set you up on the high ground and uh, you'll see what I'm doing here. It's kind of boring down there. All right, there you are, up on the high ground. I could probably grab that by hand, I don't know. How heavy that thing is. They aren't light. All right, let's see if we can get a get a rope around it. I don't want to pull my back out on these things. Got it loosened up. Like I say, having these uh, ropes readily available is nice. This one's a little thick, that's all. take this and set it aside and what brand is this one I'm gonna give it a wipe while you're here see if there's a if it's a Ford one or another aftermarket model eh. it is it's a Fomoco yeah so she's from Ford she's a uh, Yeah, she's a four C5 AR3580. A. So she's a Ford vehicle one. Alright, let me get the other way. Eh, probably weighs 25 pounds. Not that bad. I'm just being wimpy, as John said. Don't be a wimp. I'm just being a wimp. Alright, so let me grab these two. They look like 9 16ths to me. Now, what I do with my 9 16 Alright, hold on. I'll get, I'll get the wrench that works. Wrenches are all over the ground here everywhere. Right, join up here to break away. 
There we go. Yeah, see, there's no way to split those there. But that was a good shape. Soft still, not ragged at all or anything. We'll keep that probably. Save a few dollars. There we go. This has to come off to get the column out. As far as I know, anyway, it looks like it has to. bolts and they are half inch not 9 16 man my eyes are I get glasses I can't even tell what size nuts are anymore get a haircut today too though I'll look much better the next time you see me you guys are probably thinking yeah about time got a haircut <laughs> hippie yeah I don't usually have long hair but lately it's been uh, a little hard to get a haircut around here without a whole bunch of rigmarole. All right, there, there's the two bolts. And that just stays there, that bracket. All right, so officially that engine bay is empty minus this harnesses that I'll get once I take the, excuse me, once I take the, uh, actually it's not done. I should take that cover off right now while well, I'm thinking about it. The cover for the heater, the ace or the uh, air vents and the heater, and that is will be I think they're seven sixteenths. Yeah, and a, another. So let's, let's do that while we're talking about it. It all has to come off, so if all the rays will do it. I'll shorten this up some so we're not painfully watching everything here. And one screw. So these are uh, 5 16 heads on these, this plate cover. These bolts don't have anything to do with it. I thought they did, but they don't. Now that I'm in closer, That's it, one was missing out of the bottom already. I think it was holding something else on. I'm in here, I don't have a screwdriver. All right. Let me get something to pry that off with because it's gummed on there, obviously. There she comes. Yeah, there it is. Not even full of most stuff, so that's interesting. I would have thought this would be right full of most stuff. This car was pretty clean when I got it, as far as uh, rodent damage. Looks like there might have been a squirrel or something in it ahead of time. But yeah, that gives access to the, the fan motor, which is nice. And I'm guessing these, yeah, there's a support for the whole thing. So I should probably take them off while I'm here. I said they were 7 sixteenths. I think they are. All right, let's get these off. I'm here, I may as well do it because that dash has to come out anyway. So I got the 7 16th. I should clean up those threads a little first. I'm gonna do that. I should have brought a wire brush with me. Man, it's gonna be pretty thin by the time I get all this done. In, over, and All right, got the little wire brush. We're gonna clean the threads up a little first. Make it a little easier to get those off. The dirt out of them. Sure helps to wire brush the threads ahead if you can. I know not every time there's, there's room, but if you have room, it saves yourself some time. All right. Let's go at these.
Okay, that's off. I'll show you the nuts that are on those. I believe these these are specific to that part, like to hold the dash in. So they have like a tin plate and they're cupped. I suspect there would have been uh, some kind of a sealer on that. I don't see any left there, but uh, it's on the dash. It looks like there might have been a little sealer in there. I'm gonna grab a screwdriver and we'll pull the fan out while I'm here. Someone's changed this fan. And then they, of course, they've done the old uh, butt joint controller here. Lovely, no big deal. We'll fix that up. Uh, one wire completely unhooked. So it's highly unlikely that's the right fan motor. Or if it is, it's not running on all the, all the modes. But I have one in the 60, uh, the parts car, the green car. I'm gonna grab a screwdriver. We'll pull that out and see what's inside there. Another tell, all right. Let me grab my rent and my light so you can see. Another uh, telltale sign that this has been changed. <laughs> it looks like they just took some roofing screws and put in there. So, the wrong screws usually, uh, uh, I don't know what they've got there. I'll have to check on that. It's like a, it's an odd looking knot. Maybe they are the original. Hang on to them, just in case. They may be for uh, the, the replacement order. They may have come with that, because they look brand new. Yeah, they're all the same. They have uh, like uh, a screw through them, but maybe the screw's wrong and these are right. I don't know. I, uh, I couldn't imagine doing this with the engine in. This would be a tight squeeze. <laughs> bottom one off before I get too crazy. That's not even on. The bottom one. Right. Oh, my, head's, my big head's not blocking. I drop that down inside, but I'll get that in there. Well, there we are. There's the, the fan. I mean, the bolt pattern's right on it. Yeah, it's hard to say. They're made in Canada. Signal 912. I'll check on that. 12 volt. She's not. Uh, anyway, if they had. Uh, looks like she was wired with one of the speeds gone. Alright, let's see. Alright, I'll just snip these off with the old side cutters. And get rid of them. There, there's one fan. Nice. Let's set that aside. I'll check to see if it's correct. And it may be as simple as that they didn't wire up one of the one of the speeds. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it out here. So that's the engine bay pretty much cleared out. Minus these harnesses that I'll uh, I'll get out once I start taking the dash out because obviously they're hooked to something in there. All right, so we'll be moving on to the interior now. Something new and exciting. Well, that's the end of episode six uh, for the Thunderbird restoration, 65 Thunderbird convertible. Um, I'm gonna call it here. Uh, it's already getting uh, 25 minutes long. This video. Really appreciate you coming along for the ride. <clears throat> Though there wasn't a lot really in this video, uh, just some house cleaning around the uh, the uh, engine bay, getting that straightened away so we can move on to the interior. <laughs> uh, that's what we're gonna be doing next. So uh, hang in there guys, and I really appreciate you staying with me. Thank you very much. Thanks for any new subscribers coming on board. And really, thank you very much to the uh, subscribers that have been here with me all along. It uh, means a lot to me that you're here and I'm able to provide uh, some of this content for you. Uh, so, like I said, uh, the next one will be the interior. So, see you in the next one.